3D printing filament, just as important to the hobby as the 3D printer itself. You can have the best machine in the world, but if you don't have filament that's working, well, what's the point? I have used a variety of different filaments for the past five years, and I realized I've never talked about it in a video. So today we're gonna go over a bunch of the different filaments and brands I've used, which ones I recommend I'm currently using, and maybe which ones to stay clear of. Let's get started. Now, before we get started, I wanna preface this video by saying I can only go off of the experiences I've had. If you're following me or you're watching my channel, it's probably because you're into some type of prop making or cosplay, or you like printing fun things. So most of this video is going to be about PLA and PLA Plus, the alternatives to PLA, PLA Pro, whatever they wanna call it. And I can say confidently that after five plus years of doing this, I've never had a prop melt. That used to be a big touchy point about PLA. Oh, you shouldn't use it for cosplay. If it's hot outside, it might warp or melt. I have only ever had one prop warp from heat. And that was some Mandalorian helmets that I left in the second story of my garage on like a hundred degree day in the middle of North Carolina. And guess what guys, heat rises. It got to about 110 degrees in that attic and they were sitting on some um, helmet stands and they just got a little droopy. Aside from that little snafu, I have never had had a single issue with PLA or PLA plus or any of my props discoloring. No, if you live in Texas, maybe look into PETGs or something a little bit stronger, but for most cosplays and props, you're gonna be fine with PLA and PLA plus. So with that, let's get into it. So let's start off with some of the easy stuff. Like I said before, if you're watching me, it might be because you're trying to get into cosplay. And currently my favorite filaments for that is actually Sunlu PLA plus and just standard Sunlu PLA. I have been using this stuff the entire time I've been building. My red Iron Man suit that is a little um, worse for wear right here is completely made out of a variety of different colors, but it's all Sunlu PLA Plus. Starboost over here is actually made of Monoprice PLA Plus, which worked just as well, but it was a little bit pricier and didn't have as many good bundles and deals that Sunlu constantly runs. Other brands I've had success with that actually printed nice and they felt really strong and durable were uh, brands like Esun and ZYL Tech, and I'll put a list right here, just I'm forgetting some of the names, I'll have to go back and like my Amazon on orders and just to see the brands I've used. But honestly, the PLAs have worked out really well for this type of stuff. However, there are some colors I wouldn't recommend. When printing cosplay and props, I very much recommend reds, grays, or blacks especially not light colors and especially not white. My biggest reason for that is you can't tell where you've sanded it. When it's time to start post-processing your prints and you wanna get all the layer lines knocked down and you start sanding the print, can you tell where I just sanded that? Because I can't. However, on a black or gray or red print, you can clearly see where I've been over that and you can see just how much more work I need to do to knock down those last little bit of layer lines. Now, obviously you can hit it with a coat of primer first or something, but sanding initially before you ever have to do that, it just saves you materials. If I can sand this and get this nice and smooth before I have to paint it, well, I'd rather print it in a color that lends that effect to me instead of sitting there on white filament and wondering if I've already touched that area. Currently right now, any gray PLA plus in PLA, it's really my go-to favorite and they all print pretty nicely. And then at least you know where you need to smooth and touch up. Matte PLAs are a little bit tricky but out of the box they look smoother because they don't have a glossy reflective surface that's reflecting and catching all the layer lines and sending it back to you. That's why if you're just trying to print nice smooth props in some type of filament, matte PLAs are always gonna look better until you start to sand them and you'll see they have just as many layer lines as really any other print. Now, moving on from things from cosplay and props, what if you wanna start printing stuff that just looks nice right off the printer? permitted you have a printer that can do higher quality prints and you're not running like a six-year-old Ender 3 with zero upgrades on it. How do you start getting nice shiny filaments? I'm really hoping that this print in place dragon around my neck isn't making my microphone scream to the heavens. Sorry, I'm about to take it off. So this wasn't something I typically worried about when I was first getting into the hobby because I was painting and sanding all of my prints. Who cares if the print looked nice and smooth or shiny right off the printer? But as printers have gotten better, things like the K1s and X1 Carbons and the Prusas, you can get incredibly smooth prints just from silk filaments and not need to post-process them. So silk filaments are so much better than they used to be and 99% of the silk filaments filaments I'm buying are right off of Amazon. With a variety of different brands, we have Mika 3D, CC 3D, Overture, Aerion, Amolin, Sunlu, Giant Arm. We even have DO 3D or Do 3D. No, no relation to the model company, I think. And sometimes it will show up like Amazon Basics. It's not actually Amazon Basic, but there's no brand on this role. It's just 
It's just silk green filament and it works. With how much better printers and printing profiles have gotten, you can throw random silk filaments at most of the printers, especially the printers I'm running, and you'll get something out of it. Maybe you have to tweak your temperature up or down a little bit, but honestly, I don't even change the print profiles. I just run standard generic PLA. I don't even change it to silk and I still get prints like this to come off just fine. Whether you have a multicolor printer, like one of the bamboos with an AMS system, or you're just printing the silks on just a normal printer and putting it together, these were printed on my K1. Actually, almost all the devil fruits behind me were printed on my K1s and K1Cs, and they handled all the silks just fine, swapping the filaments back and forth. I wasn't adjusting profiles or temperatures. So the last types of filaments I wanna cover are the times I've branched out or I've started experimenting with newer compounds. Uh, I did use PETG at one point, but I really wasn't a fan of it. I know some people swear by it about sanding it for props and cosplay, but I don't think it sanded any better than my Sunlu PLA+, Plus. but again, that's just my personal preference. I have just started recently printing with the bamboo PLA metal and this stuff is pretty cool. It's been handling all the inner details wonderfully, but this also, you know, this is, it, it was a printed on an X1 carbon. It's gonna come out smooth, of course, but the filaments look really, really nice and they have like a little bit of a metallic sheen to them. I haven't sanded these yet. I don't know how they're gonna sand. They do feel a little, a little softer than normal PLA. Uh, the supports didn't break away as cleanly. They felt almost a little rubbery at times, but yeah, this is actually pretty cool stuff. Now, if you've been searching cosplay and filament and the best to use, and you might've actually come across something by Polymaker called Cos PLA. It is supposedly PLA that is engineered to be easy to sand and print and made for cosplay. Now, I actually received uh, 10 rolls of the A type and 10 rolls of the B type. And I'll say here, I hated it. A lot of my printers didn't like printing it. It clogged almost all of my bamboos until the filament actually got wet. Now I haven't talked about that throughout this entire video about keeping your PLAs in dry environments. I've been in North Carolina for the past three, four years, and I don't store any of my filaments in a dehumidified area. I don't use dry boxes. I don't use bags or desiccants. I kind of just throw everything out my printer and I have really never had a problem with it. Where I know some people have to dry out their filaments like every day just to get a print. I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what I'm doing sometimes, but it's working. But this Cos PLA seemed to work better the longer it sat out in the open and then it would print better on my machines. But the fresh packs, they would clog most of my machines immediately. On top of that, I don't think they sanded any better or worse than the standard filament I was using, the Sunlus and the E-Suns and the Elegus and the Creality. I just didn't have a great experience with it. And with the Cos PLA being $25, I did not see a benefit in using that when I could get things like Sunlu or Elegu or E-Sun or Creality filaments for less than $20 a roll, especially when they do their bundle deals. Now, if you've had good experience with it, that's great. I know some people swear by it, but I just did not have a good experience with it, so I cannot recommend it. <laughs> I can't, I can't wait to finish this thing. Um, so that's pretty much gonna do it for this video, guys. A lot of you guys are gonna find filaments that you just like using. I landed on my Sunlu and I love it. I know people who hate Sunlu and they like using something else. I'm a strong believer if it isn't broke, don't fix it, and it's been working fine for me. Yes, occasionally I'll test other filaments, but if it's tried and true, I just keep kind of going back to that. And I know I said earlier not to print props in white filament, but this is getting a whole different post-processing with power sanding. Don't worry about it. Just pretend like it's not even here. Let me know down below some of your guys' recommendations or maybe some of your horror stories. Maybe you've used some filament that I recommended and your printers just absolutely hated it. If you're in this hobby long enough, you'll know that some filaments just do not play well with certain printers where your Solval can love this filament and you move it over to your Creality or your Elegu and it hates it. Sometimes things like that just happen and it's kind of a live and learn situation. I know this was a little bit of a quick video, but I just wanted to get it out there. A lot of you guys have been asking recently more and more about filaments and it made me think, oh, I've never made a video like this before. And if you found this video, helpful, please consider subscribing to the channel. It helps me out and you get to stay up to date on all the things I have coming out. Updates, 3D printers, giant prop builds, and more. But that's going to be a wrap for this video, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching. You have a good day.